Mark Jangizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about some frightening developments from my point of view over the last year uh, concerning censorship. Now we've talked about censorship and free expression and we at FreeX have been focusing on the mechanisms underlying free expression and why it's so important for freedom more generally. And there's two aspects really that have um, changed a lot in the last year concerning censorship and one um, and, and, and discrimination really in general. And one is uh, big tech censorship and that uh, the mainstream narrative, if you're uh, promoting ideas that are outside of the mainstream narrative, then you're explicitly censored. You're potentially kicked off of Twitter, suspended from these private companies. And on the other side, now we have vaccine passport, uh, pushes for vaccine passports for proof uh, from pri private companies that you have been vaccinated. Either show your card, show your papers, show your uh, uh, vaccination pass on your phone. And there's another kind of discrimination. In both of these cases, you have a kind of new sort of private, uh, justified because it's a private company, discrimination against individuals. And, uh, and so the question is, how do you argue against this sort of thing? Now, as a first, a first kind of argument against this is to note that the folks that are defending private enterprise and private companies from doing these sort of two sorts of discriminatory practices the folks defending this are exactly the folks that are deeply authoritarian and defend the powers of government to um, do lockdowns, end your jobs, uh, reduce movement, require masks. Um, these are the folks that have no authoritarian bones or principles undergirding their philosophy at all. So you have to be suspicious when these folks who have no libertarian, no freedom uh, intuitions whatsoever suddenly part, start pulling out the libertarian card in defense of private companies to uh, uh, censor at their will and to discriminate against individuals on the basis of their uh, either their viewpoint or their medical uh, situation. Um, that should sound fishy to you that the only place that they're pulling out the libertarian principles in this one case and otherwise they don't agree with it. Now in the case of uh, uh, censorship with big tech one of the one argument one general sort of argument against it, even if you presume that this is private actors and private companies making these decisions, is that even from a libertarian perspective, even if this was a proper libertarian society, the main reason to have anti-discrimination, now anti-discrimination laws exist right now for sex, for race, for ethnicity, uh, for sexual orientation. Now the main reason for these anti-discrimination laws is not because those discrimination of those various forms uh, is wrong per se. Individuals are constantly doing and behaving in a wrong manner. All of their friends may be discriminating in some manner that we would all agree, yeah, that's just, that's just really douchebaggy that they would discriminate that way for their friends. But the state is not involved with that, that sort of uh, uh, deciding whether they're allowed to do that or not. The reason that it's justified, even from a libertarian point of view, to some extent, to have uh, companies that are not allowed to discriminate on the basis of religion and, and all of these various other things is because it's the notion of a public accommodation. One of the very, very first things that you would do if you were a libertarian society is allow all of the private companies to join into a kind of a public accommodation social contract where I want to be part of this public accommodation social contract with my companies because I want all the people to know that, look, you don't have to check to see whether you're the right race or right religion or right, right uh, orient, sexual orientation to come to my business. You're just allowed to come to my business, join my apartment complex, whatever it might be, and by agreeing to this sort of social contract that, that I am a public accommodation, not discriminating in any manner, um, people are much more likely to come. And that's the kind of thing we all want. We want to, want to just run our day without having to check whether they accept Persians at Whole Foods tomorrow. That's, 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 that doesn't make sense. And so this is the kind of thing that would happen in a libertarian society. And it would be voluntary. The folk, the private businesses would voluntarily enter such a social contract and a few private, few companies might say, no, I, I want to discriminate on the basis of X or Y and I'll remain a private club with a, a membership of a dollar per month or whatever, some nominal amount, but they're not going to be listed under the public accommodation companies. Now, in our society, which isn't a libertarian society, you want to approach this sort of same thing, then you have to have the notion of anti-discrimination amongst the companies that are public accommodation. And that indeed includes, includes not being discriminated against on the basis of your, of your race, your, uh, your, your age, your religion, and so forth, but also two key other things. Your viewpoint, your political viewpoint. When you join Twitter, when you join Facebook, it would be like joining an apartment complex. And when you enter the apartment complex, you're allowed, no one ever said anything 
about you not being allowed to discuss certain kinds of things in the open, in the commons area with other folks. But suddenly after 10 years and you've built a life in this apartment complex, you have your friends and your whole life built around this, suddenly the HOA says, oh, and by the way, you can no longer talk about vaccines in our public commons. Even just, wanna, we just we're not allowing that anymore. And it was in the terms of service agreement. It said that any time we could change what, we were, what you're allowed to say, no. If you're part of a public accommodation, the idea is that you can't suddenly change the rules, you can't discriminate on the basis of viewpoint, religion, sexual orientation, or and so on, and you can't change either. But in addition to anti-discrimination on the basis of viewpoint or political orientation and so forth, these same public accommodation intuitions would apply to your medical status. The companies have no right to be able to say uh, what medical, whether you've had a vaccination or not. They should have no right to be able to say you have to wear a harmful, potentially harmful mask over your face. There may be certain kinds of, uh, at a fancy club, that you have to wear a, t a jacket or tie. But having something that's required over your face, which is potentially harmful, blocks your cardiovascular system, blocks your identity, uh, blocks your ability to facially express. Um, these things, generally speaking, unless there's some very rare situations, um, should not be allowed either. So a lot of folks, there's two different kinds of folks that argue against these anti-discrimination rules, which ought to be extended to cover viewpoint and uh, medical background. And they're either um, basically folks who don't believe in libertarianism at all, don't believe in freedom, and are just pulling this out to defend their their ability to continue to censor and discriminate against those who are counter-narrative. And then there are the, the, the legitimate, really worried about freedom folks who want to defend um, libertarianism, want to defend a company's private rights to discriminate as, as however they wish. Now, no one is saying that they can't. They can still be a private, uh, a private club and they can just have membership, let's say, for a buck a month and say then they can do whatever the heck they want. But if you want to be a public accommodation, there's no reason there's no reason that Libertarian prevents social contracts allowing public accommodations to be declared. I'm part of the social contract, and hereby I'm open to everybody. And everybody includes everybody, um, including uh, a viewpoint and medical background. Now, another wrench to throw into this before I finish is that we're talking about big tech, for example, as private companies. But in fact, that's not the case necessarily at all. A lot of these private companies are censoring not because they per se want to censor. I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But in fact, they don't have much choice. Even the press secretary, secretary of the United States just last month threatened explicitly on television that if they don't start controlling disinformation on big tech, on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, if they don't start better controlling it, we'll do more antitrust regulation will be brought down upon them. The last thing these big, com big tech companies want is more regulation, and they know it in, in their bones, either implicitly or explicitly, that unless they do as they're told, they're going to be under greater regulation and be hurt. This isn't private companies censoring us. This is the state censoring us, in which case it's directly against the First Amendment rather than just the spirit of the First Amendment. And that was your science moment.